Greetings, everyone. Well, been a while since we've done one of these. I tend to let them pile up, don't I? Oh, well, whatever. It just means more for you to watch. It's update time again. Yes, got uh, piles of DVDs and Blu-rays over the past couple of months. And a, even a bunch of comic books, actually. Yes, I've got back into comic books with a vengeance. So uh, I think it's high time we did some, uh, you know, some of that uh, update action. What do you say? Yeah? Sound good? Thumbs up? All right. Ah, to begin, to begin. Where to begin? Um, well, actually, I'm kind of wearing a horror -y shirt. I don't actually even know what this shirt is. This is something my mom gave me as a gift. She thought it looked kind of cool and gothy, so she got it for me. And um, I, I don't know. I don't know what it is either, but I like the design, so I'm cool with that. So since I'm wearing something kind of cool and gothy, sounds like, uh, you know, prime garb for some horror and cult movie type stuff. So I have picked up some, uh, well, horror and cult movie type stuff. So why don't we take a look at them today? Uh, some horror and cult movie type stuff. DVD and Blu-ray update today on the Multimedia Chronicles. Welcome back. Okay, let's see. Uh, where do we start here? Let's start with the uh, with the DVDs, shall we? I picked up uh, a trio of DVDs recently, um, mainly because there was one or two movies on each of these. Uh, there are four movie sets, um, you know, quadruple features, uh, and there was one or two movies on each of these sets that I've been uh, wanting for a while, or that I've had in the past and wanted to, you know, get a nice little upgrade. Um, plus they were really cheap. I actually got all three of these sets together for under $20 on Amazon. So 12 movies for under 20 bucks. From Shout Factory, we have, well, let's start with this one. We have the four sci-fi movie marathons. So we have four movies on here. We've got Arena, which I remember reading a lot about when it was being made, but I never got around to seeing it. Always wanted to check it out. Now I own it, so I can Eliminators, which I used to have on VHS. In fact, I might still have it on VHS. I don't remember. Anyway, always really like this early Charles Band film. Lots of fun, uh, just cheesy, low-budget, direct-to-VHS fair. Uh, then we got America 3000, which Skinslip tells me is a really fun post-apocalyptic movie, so I'm looking forward to that. And then we have The Time Guardian. The Time Guardian has some interesting uh, cast in it. Yeah, it's got Carrie Fisher from Star Wars, and Dean Stockwell from Quantum Leap. So, kind of cool. Both slumming it in some low-budget sci-fi. Um, yeah, so pretty cool stuff. If, in case you're wondering if it's uh, how many discs it is, basically, we've got two. So two movies per disc, which is great, actually. That's, that's fine, because, I mean, one typical 90-minute movie can easily fit on a single-layer disc. And we got a whole bunch of uh, artwork underneath there, too, so pretty cool set so yeah you can you can have this on uh, Amazon for like six bucks I mean it's it's a really good deal if you want some uh, want some cheesy uh, you know sci-fi action from the the bygone days of VHS we'll just put that up there next up uh, show factory did a whole bunch of these I guess they just got like a stack of um, you know long forgotten movies and uh, and basically have been putting out uh, collections of them so these are all, uh, this, is this uh, Scream Factory? Yeah, this one is Shout Factory. But then on their Scream Factory label, they put out the the four all-night horror marathon. The all-night all horror for marathon. The all, all four, yeah. A four movie marathon of horror movies. <laughs> uh, so what do we got here? We got What's the Matter with Helen? Uh, the Godsend, I can actually read them off the back here. The Vagrant and The Outing. Now, interesting to note, The Vagrant and The Outing are actually getting a Blu-ray release, a double feature Blu-ray release uh, a little later this year. So, kind of cool. A lot of movies, uh, apparently, I guess these sets did really well, so a lot of them are actually getting Blu-ray releases now. 
Um, I didn't know that at the time that I, I bought these, but I mean, hey, I mean, they were like six bucks, and there's still at least a couple movies on here that aren't getting Blu-ray releases, at least not for the foreseeable future, so definitely worth picking up just for those, if nothing else. Um, yeah, so on here, th this one I actually didn't pick up because there was any one particular on here that I wanted. I hadn't really heard of any of these, so, uh, but the reason I picked it up was because... There was something on Volume 2 that I wanted of the Horror for Marathon Night All. Uh, <laughs> and specifically, that was this one here, the Dungeon Master, which I actually have on Laserdisc. And, yeah, I can't really... Can How, how accessible is the Laserdisc thing? Oh, actually, I can. Hold on a second. It just has a keyboard on it. Uh, how do I get to it? Hold on a second. Ugh. Hang on. Oh, how easy was that? It was right at the front. <clears throat> yeah, so anyway, I have the laser disc of the Dungeon Master. Now, one of the reasons I wanted to get the DVD edition was A, just to, you know, have the quality upgrade. B, this disc is sadly horribly, horribly laser rotted. It's almost unwatchable now. Plus, I don't have a functional laser disc player. Um, but yeah, anyway, really wanted to get this. My introduction to this movie was actually a uh, late night showing on City TV in Toronto back in the late 80s. Um, they had like a triple bill of cheesy horror movies. They had uh, The Dungeon Master, going by its alternate title of Rage War, followed by uh, The Alien Factor, which is a great low-budget sci-fi movie that uh, I have on DVD now somewhere. It's, uh, it's in the back somewhere. Anyway, um, The Alien Factor, followed by The Fantastic Invasion of Planet Earth, which was a formerly 3D movie. Uh, kind of reminiscent of Under the Dome, actually. <laughs> uh, same kind of idea where this uh, small town, um, you know, some people find themselves in this small town and then discover that the town is actually enclosed in a giant glass dome and they uh, are trying to get out. So they get the uh, impression that they've been put under under glass to be observed by aliens or something like that. I actually thought it was kind of a cool movie. It kind of played out like an extended, almost like a, a you know, lesser Twilight Zone episode, but uh, really cool stuff. Anyway, The Dungeon Master. Uh, another reason I wanted to get The Dungeon Master is because that late night viewing that I recorded, I still have the VHS tape kicking around somewhere, my lo-fi EP VHS recording. Um, that version of it was actually the uncut version. The Laserdisc is actually the censored version, which cuts out. There's a scene at the very beginning, it's a dream sequence that has some full frontal nudity in it and uh, and stuff like that. Uh, that sequence is cut out of some a, a lot of the, the prints of the Dungeon Master floating around out there. Um, <clears throat> but the one that goes by the title of Rage War is actually the full uncut version that includes that scene. And uh, I don't know if there's anything else missing. I think it was mainly just that one scene. But, uh, I mean, I wanted it complete, obviously. So, very happy to say on this DVD set is the complete uncut version. So if you've had any of the previous releases, like the VHS or Laserdisc releases, you've got the censored version. This is the first time I'm aware of that the uncensored version has actually been made available over here. So uh, pretty cool stuff. Really, really happy to get that. So anyway, that was the main reason I wanted to get this. I mean, that was worth the six bucks alone, as far as I was concerned. Uh, then we also have Cellar Dweller and Catacombs, both of which are also getting a double feature Blu-ray release. In fact, I think it's already out. Uh, and then we have Contamination Point Seven, which apparently is, uh, I don't know, it's a ripoff of something. I can't remember. Sort of a... Uh, yeah, I have no idea. Skinslip was mentioning the other night that it was uh, a sort of part of a trifecta of ripoffs of something, but I don't remember what it was. Anyway, some good, uh, good fun horror stuff there. Dungeon Master isn't strictly horror; it's more kind of you know fantasy type stuff. I always liked it because um, it's got kind of an anthology vibe to it. It's actually done by seven different directors. And each director has a, you know, if it's it's a guy, his girlfriend gets captured by this evil wizard, played by Richard Mull, by the way, of Night Court fame. And uh, he has to go to the, the wizard's realm to rescue her. 
and he puts him through like seven challenges and each challenge is you know some something that he has to uh, defeat or overcome or outwit or whatever and uh, each of those challenges is by a different director so kind of kind of cool all righty so that is it for the dvds next up we have some blu-rays ah most recently from uh from scream factory once again uh, also, not strictly horror, it's actually a sort of dystopian sci-fi, but one of my all-time favorites, we have Escape from New York, the collector's edition. Very, very nice indeed. And then, of course, we have the original poster art there. I actually always really like the original poster art, but uh, there you go. So, very nice special edition. Slightly different artwork on the back. And uh, this is a, yeah, this is a two-disc. To, uh, actually two blu-ray discs that's how many extras are on here there's just a multitude of stuff now I do still have uh, yes this right here <laughs> it's right there the uh, special edition DVD because the special edition DVD has some additional material that's not in the uh, the, sh the screen factory edition specifically some packing material there's like a little comic book and stuff like that Maybe I'll do a closer look, and we'll take a look at both of those at some point. Uh, but yeah, really excited to get this. I passed on the original Blu-ray release of Escape from New York because it was A, lacking extras, and B, apparently not that great of a transfer. Apparently this one is much better. I've not had the chance to sit down and watch it yet. But uh, love this movie. One of my all-time favorite John Carpenter movies. Alrighty. Let's see. Next up, uh, just a... Uh, horror, this is a reacquisition I used to have on VHS, or not VHS, my time about on DVD, a DVD, a viewer sent it to me a while back, really wanted to upgrade it to, uh, upgraded it to Blu-ray, because, uh, I watched all of the sequels this past Halloween, you may remember I did a video about it, finally picked up the very first Paranormal Activity, which I know all of you love unanimously, yeah, I know, the feelings on that one are very mixed, but anyway, really wanted to get the, uh, the blu-ray of that so now i've got the whole set of five and i'm eagerly awaiting whatever the next chapter may be all right so next up picked up uh some more this is actually some that uh came out on the shout factory label prior to scream factory being formed as a label um it, if if it had been if these had been released more recently um, they definitely would have been Scream Factory titles. There's no question about that. But anyway, so first off, we have Damnation Alley. Just a good old-fashioned post-apocalyptic uh, saga with the Landmaster, one of the coolest, you know, RVs ever made for film. Uh, very, very cool stuff. So I've been wanting to check this one out for a while. Uh, I saw that Skin Slip had picked it up, and uh, that prompted me to, to grab it. Another thing that Skins that prompted me to pick up was he mentioned that uh, Roger Corman's Cult Classics, the uh, collection that you may recall I mentioned a while back when a view very generous viewer sent me Death Race 2000. Well, this is just one of a whole collection of titles that Shout Factory released on DVD and Blu-ray. Mostly DVD, but a handful on Blu-ray of classic stuff that Roger Corman either produced or directed. Now, there's quite a few in that collection I've, been, I've had my eye on for a long time. I've been waffling about them for ages. But Skinslip mentioned that they were all going out of print. So if I was going to get them, I better get them soon. So kind of blew the budget this month to, uh, to do so. But uh, not having any regrets whatsoever. I've been watching these all week and just having a blast with them. So let's start in chronological order. First off, I picked up Star Crash, a... Basically, the Italian Star Wars. <laughs> and stars a very young David Hasselhoff as the the Prince of the Galaxy. And Christopher Plummer, <clears throat> uh, joyously slumming it as the Emperor of the Universe. So, pretty cool stuff. Um, one thing i got to say, I'm really impressed with these old, uh, uh, you know, low-budget sci-fi movies is just the quality of the model work. Like, some of the practical, like, a lot of the practical effects and the sets and the models are just fantastic. They really did a nice job on them, and uh, especially considering what little budget they had to work with. Um, but, uh, yeah, really, really fun stuff. Really enjoyed this a lot, and uh, pretty cool. Got the uh, heroine there who's in essentially in that state of dress through most of the movie because, you know, sexy women kick ass. And then uh, if we take this out here, we've got, uh, is it a DVD? 
yeah so DVD and blu-ray got uh, some special features here more special features here and we also have I'll just show you I won't bother taking it out but uh, we also have a reversible cover actually you know what I will take it out what the hell we'll do this as a mini closer look update shall we uh, so we got a nice reversible cover quite nice I actually kind of like this artwork better I might go with this one more kind of Star Warsy but uh, yeah very very cool stuff so I really enjoyed Star Crash a lot uh, it's fun um, I, I wouldn't say it's the best of the ones I'm about to show you like not my personal favorite but it was certainly a lot of fun and I will definitely definitely watch it again and again and again um, I just love this type of stuff the low budget sci-fi that uh, you know using the old the old models and and everything it's just uh, great great stuff so next up we have this is the one that I've really been wanting to get for a long time because I, I absolutely loved this movie as a kid um, it's basically another kind of low budget Star Wars looking at it now I realize it's actually the Magnificent Seven in space like that's literally what it is it's the magnificent it's totally the story of the magnificent seven just set in space um <clears throat> and once again some really spectacular model work on this this one's notable in that james cameron was actually one of the uh principal uh art directors on this and uh this is one of his earliest uh uh one of the earliest movies that he worked on we have battle beyond the stars Starring, uh, what's his face, uh, Richard Thomas, who is, of course, uh, John Boy in the Waltons. So we got John Boy in space, saving the universe. <laughs> and we've also got, uh, what's his face, George Papard, who was the original Hannibal in uh, uh, the A-Team. And we also have Robert Vaughn, Napoleon Solo himself. Uh, as what I think is just simply the most badass character in the movie. He plays this sort of assassin who's done really well for himself and and uh, he joins the, the the good guys here to fight the bad guys. And then we got John Saxon as the main bad guy, which is interesting to see him as like a lead villain character. <laughs> I always saw him more as sort of second, like a supporting uh, uh, character type of actor. I mean, I always remember him as uh, Nancy's father in the original Nightmare on Elm Street movies and stuff like that. But uh, but yeah, anyway, he's 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 the big baddie in this one. He's the one they're all out to get. But uh, yeah, so essentially, uh, peace loving planet becomes uh, you know uh, attacked by evil aliens, evil alien o overlord and his minions. So young farm boy uh, takes a, a spaceship up uh, to ser search the universe for mercenaries to hire to fight to defend his planet and and save his people. So. It's the seven. It's the seven samurai. It's the magnificent seven. There you go. So anyway, really uh, enjoyed this one a lot. Uh, I I literally had not seen this since I was probably about twelve, so it was really cool to uh, to see it again. I I was twelve again. It was wonderful, and we got kind of a reversible cover here. Not really. Well, yeah, it's not really a reversible cover. It's more just kind of you know artwork on the inside. You get some alternate poster art here. And stuff like that but uh, very very cool uh, love this movie very much um, I mean it's it's cheesy as hell it's exactly what you expect the acting is you know <laughs> it's not the greatest performances from all the actors involved except Robert Vaughn because he's always awesome but um, but worth it just for the cheese factor and the fun factor and uh, uh, oh you got Sybil Danning as a uh, like space Amazon warrior chick so very cool there you go. So Battle Beyond the Stars. Definitely enjoyed that one. Then, this is one I've been wanting to check out for a long time. A lot of people say this is part of the uh, part of Roger Corman's sort of trifecta of alien ripoffs. Um, I, but honestly, other than aesthetically, like the environment that it's set in, the story of this is nothing like Alien at all. So I don't know why people keep calling it an alien ripoff. We've got Galaxy of Terror. Yeah. This one I really enjoyed a lot. Uh, I mean, you've got some really awesome actors in the cast here. You got uh, Edward Albert, Aaron Moran, Ray Walson. You got Robert Englund, um, and you got uh, Sid Haig, and um, oh, what's her face from uh, Ah, I can't remember the uh, Grace Zabriskie. Yeah, that's who it was. Yeah, Grace Zabriskie, who was of course the um, uh, Laura Palmer's mom in Twin Peaks, and as 
been in numerous, numerous other movies over the years too. But uh, really fun stuff. I really like this. It's actually, you know, I mean, it's it's again low budget sci fi horror, but uh, but very psychological. It's much more about you know it, it, it to me it reminded me a lot of Event Horizon. Actually, it's like a low budget Event Horizon, except this predates Event Horizon by almost twenty years. <laughs> so I guess about fifteen years thereabouts. So we look inside. We got this nice. And I, I love this artwork here. Just it's such fifties sci fi pulp sci-fi horror magazine style artwork you know it's great great stuff and then uh, we take it out we actually do have an insert here it is a reversible cover and we have the alternate title mind warp an infinity of terror <laughs> what a terrible title i'm so glad they didn't go with that title uh they actually did market it under that title as well they have a trailer for it with the original crappy mind warp title um so you can see how it was originally marketed and the trailer is terrible it's just like wow does that movie ever look boring and then they revamped it they did they changed the title to galaxy of terror and did a new trailer for it and the new trailer is just awesome it's such a kick-ass trailer you're like wow that movie looks amazing i need to see that and had awesome like uh, synthesizer almost techno uh, terror music and, and yeah great stuff so Galaxy of Terror really enjoyed that one a lot uh, definitely going to revisit that one again and again and next up I have not watched these two yet these are kind of next on my list uh, but uh, you know two more that uh, I'd heard of for a long time wanting to check out for a long time and you know just given how much I enjoyed these um, I'm pretty sure I'm going to enjoy these as well uh, we have Humanoids from the Deep Oh, here we go. They're not human, but they hunt human women. Not for killing, for mating. Mmm. Disturbing stuff. So I'm imagining lots of alien violation in this. <laughs> so there you go. And they got some alternate artwork there. Um, now if we... Now it's pretty cool. The, the, uh, a lot of these do come with, with booklets, which is nice. Not all of them, but you know, this Battle Beyond the Stars didn't come with a booklet, but but most of these do, which is which is quite cool. And then again, we have uh, alternate artwork. Uh, this one featuring the alternate title, Monster, which is kind of an innocuous title. It could mean anything. I do like that cover, though. That's, that's a pretty cool painted cover. Very reminiscent of, again, like 50s horror comics and stuff like that. Very cool. Um, but yeah, Humanoids from the Deep, just, I don't know, sounds more menacing, I think, but, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool, and I gotta say, all of these are absolutely loaded with extras, I mean, a minimum of, like, uh, most of them have, like, at least an hour-long documentary about the making of it, interviewing principal cast and crew whenever possible, and, uh, and often even more in commentary tracks and stuff like that, so... I did check out a fair number of the extras on uh, on these these three here, and uh, really really good stuff. Now this one this one here uh, is the one that actually prompted me to jump on the Roger Corman cult classics collection after putting them off for so long because this is the one that Skinslip said was going out of print. So as soon as I saw this was going out of print and saw they only had like two left on Amazon, I checked up all the other ones that I'd had my eye on. Saw they also had only like two or three left on Amazon. I was like, oh crap, they're all going out of print. They're all almost out of stock. I better get them all now. So I did. These weren't cheap. They were like 20, 26 bucks a piece. Um, but well worth it. I mean, these are beautiful collector's editions and uh, an absolute treat for anyone who is a fan of these types of movies. Uh, definitely worth getting. Um, so I picked up Forbidden World. So this is another one of the apparent alien ripoffs. Apparently this one is a much more direct alien ripoff. It's, it's, it's a low-budget alien movie. Um, but yeah. But that's what Roger Corman was all about. Sort of take what's popular at the day uh, of the day and exploit it. Like do their own version uh, to make money and whatnot. So, I mean, that's, that's what it's all about. So, uh, Forbidden World also went by the title of Mutant, and you can see that there is an alternate cut, or an alternate, uh, you see the alternate title here. This one actually has two cuts of the movie. You've got the, uh, theatrical version in high definition, which is right here, and then you've got the uncut, uh, director's cut version, which is about, uh, five minutes longer so you get five additional minutes in the director's cut uh, and it goes by the title of mutant sadly only available on dvd i don't know why maybe just lack of source elements but if we uh take the insert out 
here. You can see the alternate cover with the just ridiculous looking monster. <laughs> oh, one thing I should mention, Galaxy of Terror was the one where it, James Cameron kind of showed what he could do on Battle Beyond the Stars. But then when they did Galaxy of Terror, like the following year, he was made the full-blown uh, art director just because he did such such great work and it was really on the ball. So uh, all the design work in Galaxy of Terror is very much James Cameron's work. So if you're a fan of, of his stuff, then uh, you probably want to check that out because it's definitely a, a notable one in his career. Okay, so Forbidden World. All right. Now, last, but most definitely not least, this one I had to pick up. Never seen the movies as a total blind buy. Um, I'm going totally by the recommendation of Skin Slip here. I mentioned Skin Slip a lot in this video because, you know, as far as uh, geeky.com goes and just generally you know, amongst people I know, he is the cult film guy. Like, he knows cult film better than anybody I know. And um, I trust his judgment. He knows the kind of stuff I like. So when he recommends something to me, yeah, I have yet to be disappointed by any of his recommendations. So this was one that he recommended to me for a couple of reasons, just because he said it's a really wild and crazy and t just bizarre movie. Uh, but also because he said uh, the practical effects, like the makeup effects and everything, and they're really, really well done. So I've been wanting to check this out. Uh, plus, this uh, this particular uh, edition is a l very limited collector's edition. I think they only did like... Uh, you know a couple thousand of them if that maybe one thousand i don't know but it was a very very limited edition only available for a short time i just happened to luck out and find it on amazon uh it was like 40 bucks you know not cheap being a collector's edition but uh but well worth it picked up society the limited collector's edition there is an unlimited collector's edition coming out uh now this is from arrow video arrow video has started releasing stuff in north america yeah they actually have uh north american distribution through amazon now so you can get a lot of arrows titles specifically their region free stuff just through amazon.com how cool is that so i got this through amazon.com now this is the this is the collector's edition this is now officially out of print maybe you can find it i don't know uh look around if you're interested in it but um but really cool i mean this whole thing is, is all bumpy and glossy and it's very nice and the uh the back here i'll just take off uh basically you can just see how many there's just a ton ton of extras on here really uh really good stuff um so if we take a look this uh is is embossed on all sides like the uh I don't know how well you can see here. I'll just see if I can. Sorry. See how well you can see a little bit. It's embossed. You can see how much it's it's like embossed there. It's it's all textured and everything. Very cool. See so like this this fleshy box. <laughs> and uh, the only side that isn't is the bottom, but that's that's understandable. So if we slide it out here, we basically have a digipack with uh, continuous artwork. So we take a look there. Very cool. And if we turn it around, there we go. Very cool. So this, uh, so the inserts here, we have. Uh, this is actually the original movie poster, Society. Very cool. It's kind of like a horror satire on uh, on like high society and you know high society parties and social life and stuff like that. And then here we've got, uh, what do we got here? Oh, we got just kind of a, yeah, so we got just like a bunch of other Arrow releases. And very, very nice card, actually. It's actually a, a card. It's pretty cool. And then we have a, uh, a nice booklet all about the, about the movie. Arrow always does nice uh, insert booklets. Uh, you may recall I've uh, I have received a, a number of uh, Arrow titles from viewers in the past. I've never this is the first time I've actually picked up myself. That's pretty cool. There you go. So yeah, so this is kind of uh, one of those horrors of the flesh type movies. So if you like David Cronenberg type stuff, like maybe maybe I, I want to say like Videodrome and uh, Scanners and uh, uh, Naked Lunch and things like that, you'll probably like Society from what I. I have heard about it and and uh, what uh, Skinslip has told me about it, because uh, it definitely seems to be of that ilk, very uh, very twisted. And then uh, an additional extra, only available in the collector's edition, we have this, which is 
Society Party Animal, which is a comic book sequel to the movie. It's a full, it's full length graphic novel. It's not like a preview of a forthcoming one or anything. No, this is the whole thing. As far as I'm aware, this is the only place it's ever been published too. I mean, this is, this is uh, the the sequel to the movie. So that's pretty cool. Um, I, I really like it when they have cool pack-ins like that. Um, I approve. <laughs> Sorry, I just gotta very carefully put this back in the box here. Um, yeah, there we go. Society. Excellent. So yeah, I'll definitely be looking forward to uh, watching that. Probably going to uh, uh, check it out and uh, and do some kind of a review, sort of an early Halloween review. Or I might do the review and then save it for Halloween because, you know, Halloween's just around the corner. So, wow, it's almost Halloween again already. Where did the year go? Holy moly. <sighs> Alrighty, so there you go. So some pretty cool uh, additions to the, the, the cult horror and, uh, and uh, sci-fi collections there. A little bit of overlap, obviously, because, uh, you know, this is sci-fi horror. These two are just straight-up space opera. This is These are sci-fi horror. This is just kind of like horror, sci-fi, 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 horror with some sci-fi and fantasy elements. But, uh, yeah, anyway, really cool stuff. A lot of fun there. Um, definitely looking forward to checking out the ones I haven't watched yet. And definitely enjoying the ones that I have watched. So, yeah, good stuff. So if you're looking to get the Roger Corman Cult Classics collection that Shell Factory put out, I highly recommend them. They are just fantastic. The transfers look look terrific. Um, the extras are plentiful. And, uh, yeah, just a great, great collection of stuff. So get them before they're gone, if they're not gone already. But, uh, yeah, because they're going to start going for collector's prices pretty soon, I think. So jump on them. Don't wait like I did. I'm actually kind of lucky that i got them i think so there you go so just like to take a moment to thank my patreon sponsors thanks patreon sponsors you guys and gals rock you rock my socks um yeah special big thanks to kyle pellegree and get your gorgeous on of course my two highest level sponsors thank you very very much guys really appreciate the support um yeah i said it before i'll say it again if every one of my subscribers pledged like a dollar like one freaking stinking dollar a month i could do this all the time wouldn't that be awesome wouldn't you love to see me do this all the time i'd love to do this all the time you know it's i i could actually have time to watch all this stuff that i own and review it for you how would that be sound like a good a good deal you know it sounds like a win-win scenario to me i don't know just saying Alrighty, that is it for me to you for now so wow that was a hella long update well why not i haven't done one for a while so it deserved it. All right, so next time, well, more updates. I've got one, two, three, four, five, at least five more videos worth of updates to do. So enjoy. I'll try to post at least one a day until they're done. Uh, and we'll see how it goes. And, of course, continuing on with the video game posts, which uh, I know many of you have been enjoying and hope you will continue to enjoy. All righty, that is it for me to you for now. So until next time, thanks for watching and sayonara.